what got you into science? I, I think because I wanted to want to do something different, and I had a bad habit of a thought. I love to read comic books. They're always about exciting people, doing exciting things, strange, strange worlds and strange, strange people and exciting things. And I used to leave comic books all the time. I had around three or 400 comic books in my room at one time. And, and they got me interested in science because comic books meant excitement. And, of course, I learned how to be a very good reader by reading comic books, too. And my father was a body man who worked on automobiles, and he used to build things. And when he had parts of the automobiles and the motors around, I used to play with them. I wondered how they would work. Uh, and I played with them a lot, and my father would talk to me about it and tell me what to do and why. This is a transmission. It does this and this. And so I, I learned a lot there. I always wanted to do something, to build something, to create something, to see something come from my hands or my imagination. Okay? Yeah. Would you, when you were like little, or do you, would you ever think that you would be this successful? Uh, I, I was very poor, you know. And we were very poor. And I'm the first one in my family to have graduated from college. My father was very bright, but bright than me. My brother and I both have doctorates uh, in physics, and we are we are poor. We're the poorest kids in the world, but we were able to find out that by working hard in science. The reason science offers so many directions for people because people who work hard succeed. And a lot of people are too damn lazy to work hard. So the advantage is if you get in there and decide you're really going to do it, you can be successful. You know, and a lot of people much rather take history and music or philosophy and do nothing. When I was in college, they used to go on big trips on the weekend. I gave up at 6 o'clock in the morning on Saturday and study all day. While they were having good fun, partying, the other humanity majors. But now, a lot of them are doing really boring stuff. I'm not as young. I'm doing a lot of still interesting, fascinating stuff. So science, I think, is the best way to go. And there will be jobs open for you because it's not easy. And the things that are easy, you know, they become over flooded. But but it's interesting too. You see, what I mean, you have to work in science. You, you, no matter who you are, you have to work. Okay. Have you um, found a lot? Are you spend my time, you spending time studying? Yeah. That's very important. You got to realize there's nothing disgraceful about studying. There's nothing wrong with trying to learn something and better yourself. We have all these crazy people today who seem to, to think that the easy way out, this honest way out, is the way to go. <laughs> that is not true. And we, the country's having a lot of trouble now economically, but there's still a lot of room for people to do science and mathematics, create, to build, and to understand, to explore. All those things are very important. The reason I work for NASA, and we try to think that way, our budget is in trouble as usual, but they want to cut that quite a bit. But we still love our country and we love learning things, you know what I mean? Was it you invented a type of X-ray? An uh, uh, X-ray? Yes. Oh yeah, X-ray. See, what I did is a. Uh, see, what we want to we can tell about the creation of the Earth and the things that's going going on in outer space and things like that by looking at what they emit. X-rays are very high-powered light particles that are sent off, and they needed a detector years ago to be able to measure and give a spectrum or a spread of how these, where these things come from. And I came up with a novel way of doing it. And that was one of the ways they talk about because it came on invention. I got patents and awards for it. So unfortunately, there are better ways of doing it now. But when I did it, it was fun doing it. Uh, and I got paid for it and we get papers on it and things like that. And I belong to the scientific community of people who are curious, trying to figure out what's going on. And I really, I have fun. I, I tell the people at my school all the time, I'm working, but I'm still having fun. And that's good when you're 70 years old. <laughs> one, one of the big, biggest thing we have in this country now is people are neglecting education and teachers. 
I found the most wonderful thing you can ever have is a good teacher. And, you know, and, I'm, and I, when I was a kid, my, my mother died when I was 10, and I became a bad boy. I was always getting into fights and all that kind of stuff. And, and I met this teacher who was in my school. She's a very, well, she's a very homely woman. He took me aside and talked to me and gave me my first book, which was called Straight Up. It's about helicopters. And I started reading it and getting all the trouble I used to. And I found the science and everything was very much good. I was very angry when my mother died. I thought the whole world has cheated me out of something very important, my mother. And but I was able to divert myself towards science and reading and be able to save me from getting in a lot of trouble when I was a kid. Okay. You need something to occupy you. You need something you think is important. Something you think you want to do. Something you think that makes the world go around. Uh, that is so important for life. Uh, and I believe by hard work, you can achieve everything you, you want to. Our country needs you. You know, we need you very much, and we got to somehow stop this. Well, I feel these nuts in Washington, these tea baggers, the first thing they want to cut is education <laughs> and get rid of the education department. I don't understand that. We need to educate young people. They need to learn as much as possible. Okay? Okay. So, I think you can help. It's a lot of fun being a scientist, okay? It says uh, you've had a lot of colleagues out that helped you mm -hmm. um, throughout your job experience. What would you say is the one that you think helped you the most and just kind of believed you and followed you? Mm. Who was the most important person? I think it's my daddy. <laughs> because I was very fortunate when I was a kid because we were poor, but my father, we said we're supposed to do this, we had a garage next to the house. My father converted that and drive, drive into an automobile shop. And so during the summer and everything while I was home from school, I would go in the garage and watch my father work on cars, you know, and spend time talking to him about how things work. And that was a great jump for me to understand basic things. You know, how automobiles work, you know, how basic instruments work, you know, how you produce a, a vacuum pump, how you produce the sanders, how the electrical circuits work, what this part, what that part, what does it do. So I learned a lot about cars. And my father loved having me there. So I spent most of my days during the summer when I wasn't in school with my father in the garage, <laughs> seeing what he was doing, and, you know, things of that sort. And that was a great experience. But I had my father work way across someplace. He was right next to the house. And that was wonderful when I was growing up. So my father influenced me a lot because I always asked him questions. And he always tried to answer them for me. And he always had so many things he wanted to talk about, uh, explain to me. It was, it was wonderful. I missed my father quite a bit. Yes. What, uh, what, you in the fifth grade now? Yeah, I'm in the fifth grade. You have any good teachers? <laughs> Yeah, I have three teachers because I, I switched schools and they can only find so many teachers that teach the fifth grade. And I have mm -hmm. science, social studies, and uh, math are the three main subjects. The math is Im important, too. Uh, I think the math even teaches you how you teach you how to think orderly and how to approach problems by being able to do math. you play any music? Um, uh, I, I play violin. Oh, fantastic. You'll find the violin and the music, I think, is the most, one of the most important things to give you a scientific mind. Uh, the correlation between the various kinds of notes and how they respond to each other, the organization and the hard work it takes. Maybe you're more talented than me. I play alto saxophone. If I wasn't too good, I had to really work hard and long hours to, every night to be halfway decent. And, and because of, I learned to be a musician, Unless you're one of those fantastic gifted people I hate because the guys they pick the instruments up and play them immediately, you'll find that you can learn determination and drive by doing music. And that's a very good thing, too. And the violin is a very good instrument. So I think you're doing the right thing. Okay? Okay. What do you think is the biggest project you're doing right now? Oh, what would you say? I can hear you. Huh? What would you say? What do you think? What do you think is the biggest project you're doing right now? I'm doing right now? 
Uh, what I've been doing recently, I've been worried about uh, various types of missiles and how to make sure they work properly on the proper standards so there won't be any failures. So uh, that's why I do a lot of different things. I bounce around with this play field, that field. I do a lot of things in making chips, semiconductor devices. I guess I made most of my uh, uh, reputation on And these things are getting so fast and they're getting so much what they call function. I mean, they can do so much. They can do more and more things on them. So they say in 15 to 20 years, the computers you make be smarter than man. They be able to think better than man. And when you see these crazy movies like the uh, Terminator and all this kind of stuff, or the uh, Matrix, where they talk about machines attacking man, you know that's true, that's possible. Completely possible. A war between men and machines is completely possible. Because these machines are really thinking now. We'll be able to beat, make machines and actually get pretty close to thinking as good as man. And in 20 years, these machines, if we're not really programmed to stop thinking at a certain level, will be able to challenge man to make decisions. When I read this, I was bad. I mean, you're not kidding about, did you see the Terminator? Yeah. Hello? Huh? You mean he was fighting his machine, he saw Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger as a uh, robot, and, and these robots. That kind of a stuff is actually possible. Isn't that wild? You know, and then you saw the term, you saw the Matrix, where the machines were, uh, you saw the Matrix, didn't you? Yes. That's a great movie, I thought it came, and that kind of thing is actually possible. But if men keep building computers, they make to have they have to make a, 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 a allowances for the possibility that the machine will sometime and somehow not want to be a servant. So they may be thinking more than man and better than man, and it may be a challenge. I thought that was a fantastic concept. Yeah. Of course, as, as, as we, we like to go and find new planets and see if people really live there on other planets on other uh, solar systems. Uh, that is scary because we, we wonder that you know, maybe they might be might be nice people if they want to fight us. You know, I have a, you know we always worry about that kind of thing when you go to a new world or something. But there's so many things to learn out there. While you are learning, there's nothing more important and more fun than learning. So if you understand and you're able to have so much inside of you, which is interesting and fascinating, and you're able to talk to other learned people, and you see. Science, education, all these things are so important. And you get older like me, you find they even more important because you start understanding things a little better after you've missed them up so many times and been over so many times. Uh, and I'm quite glad that I'm a scientist. I think you can say you want to be a scientist. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you're going to regret it. It's, a, it's the best profession in the world as far as, as, as the working conditions. Because you're a thinker, you're a creator, you're not really a hot dog or a hamburger, mustard put it on a bun or something like that. You're really building things. You're not doing laborious, tedious work. You see what I mean? That makes it very interesting. Okay?